these things. So I sought out people to do this. Most people join any kind of opportunity, pills, potions, lotions, services, insurance, mortgage companies, whatever, for the money. Okay, that's the, that's the kind of the uh, hierarchy of needs. In fact, I'm going to draw that real quick and start here. Okay, draw that. Okay, just draw that. That's an L, an R, and a dollar sign. Okay. <clears throat> They've studied people out, you know, obviously psychologists and people with nothing better to do study people out, right? But they produce extraordinary results because they learn how people think. There's a thing called the hierarchy of needs. This was kind of a neat little thing I learned a while ago. Uh, the hierarchy of needs, because if we're dealing with people, like we said, you guys are in the people business, you're not in the insurance company in business, but if you're in the people business, you've got to figure out where people fit and what their main priorities are in life to get them to where they need to be. Leadership is merely getting people to do what they normally wouldn't do when you are not there. So you have to figure out ways to do that. I've got some tips on the PowerPoint when I bring it up on how to do that. But the hierarchy of needs says that the number one thing that most people are focusing on out of the gates is money. Everybody wants some money right now. They want to get money. They want to get money. I mean, a lot of people right now need money all the time. They're money, 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 money. So if we can show them a simple way through like the power of one I just showed you, what you guys do part-time, get some people in. Hey, if you want to do this full-time, we've got some great stories on that. That gets that going. The next biggest thing but, and that the greatest companies do that help people get success, and obviously I know the Hows do this very, very well, is the next big driving factor is if I'm making money, more importantly than money, believe it or not, once money starts to come in, is recognition. R stands for recognition. This is a secret of all secrets just about. Recognition, because if you, if pe people want recognition, here's why. 99% of the people that are working a nine to five job or they're out in their career world right now, never get properly edified in front of anybody, especially their peers. They go through the, they go through the, uh, you know, the motions, they do things, and what happens is if you're never recognized, if there's never a reward for doing something, what happens to your overall ambition? Goes in the tank, right? You start to lose your drive, you start to lose your enthusiasm for what you're doing, and that's why mediocre results happen for long periods of time. You see people, you ever watch or, or know of any people, or maybe you've experienced this, You've gotten a regular job. You've worked at a place, a factory or whatever. You showed up and you were like, I am gonna show these guys how amazing I am. I am awesome, I know it. I'm gonna tear it up, I'm gonna be on time, I'm gonna work diligently, I'm gonna go above and beyond the call of duty. And all of a sudden you do that, and then the guy or the lady that's been sitting there for 15 years doing the exact same job is kicked back, smoking a cigarette, you know, relaxing and doing stuff, and they're looking at you like you're goofy, right? And you're asking them, and what happens a lot of times, these people sitting here with their feet kicked up smoking cigarettes will start to tell this person, why are you trying so hard? You're only going to make a certain amount of money. You can only get to my level of smoking cigarettes and sitting back and relaxing if you've been here longer. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going on in the real world. That's what's out there. You guys probably have experienced it. But with our type of industry and our type of business where we're people business, people, what, uh, what is rewarded is repeated. Write that down. Don't ever forget it. What is rewarded is repeated. All actions, good or bad, are re repeated. If you do something bad and you get a reward for it, you'll do it again. It's just human nature, right? Like I had to learn, uh, what last I read a book, There's, uh, I'll give you a book to read on this. This is a really, really good, easy, easy book to read. It's called Whale Done, W-H-A-L-E, like the big orca killer whales. It's written in story form. A guy that wrote it tells it about how they, he went to SeaWorld. He was failing in business. I think he may have even been in insurance and he was failing couldn't figure it out, and he was about to lose his job. He was going to get uh, you know, kicked out of his promotion position because he couldn't get anybody to do anything. Anybody ever had people in their business that they couldn't get them to do anything? Guess what? It's not them. It's you. Sorry. It's not them. It's you. Anytime I, my group of people is not producing, 
I finally have to shut my pie hole, put my pride down, and go, guess what? They're following my example. They're, 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 they're achieving the level that I've set for them. My bad. And I had to learn these things. And I read, I read this book. Best, easiest way, uh, I th thank you, God, for allowing me to apply this easy right out of the gates with a peewee football team. My son plays peewee football. They got a team. Two coaches are complete hillbillies besides myself. And they're screaming at these kids. Screaming at these kids. Every time they do something bad, they're screaming at these kids, screaming at these kids. So I'm thinking, you know what, this is, I just read that book. That's not how you get people to do anything. So when a kid who had never played football before makes a tackle, guess what I do? That was amazing, Bill. You are awesome. Billy, I cannot believe that you, with the talent you have, you went out there and did that. Guys, did you see what Billy just did? And all of a sudden, Joe, who didn't know how to play football, guess what he wants? He wants recognition like Billy did. And pretty soon, all of these kids were doing things that they normally weren't doing. Kids that would, I literally had a kid that drove me insane, that cried during leg lifts. You lie on your back and you pick your legs up. He would hold his mask and go, oh, and I'm like yelling. And the one mean hillbilly coach that was a Pittsburgh Steeler fan who probably was beat all his life, would get in this kid's face and just call it, just yell at him and call him all these things. And I'd go over there. And I, when he got, when he held him up for 10 seconds flat, guess what I said to him? Dude, did you see what you just did? You got him, you had your hands up for 10, your feet for 10 seconds. That's the best you've ever done. Different, different, same kid, right? Different reaction. Guess what happened next practice? Wasn't crying as much, was able to lift his legs almost 12 seconds before he snapped, right? Dude, 12 seconds, 12 seconds on that one. That's awesome. By the time the season was done, uh, this kid was not crying. He wasn't starting, but he was out there and he was going and making some, ta he actually went in and made some tackles. Our team actually won the championship that year. I'm not saying that I had anything to do with it necessarily, but they called me Coach Positive after that point. That was my nickname. It was Coach Positive this year because everything I try to do, because if you, uh, if you point out somebody's negative things, what do they dwell on? The negative stuff. I'm not saying that they, should, that they shouldn't be corrected in areas, but you have to be very careful with your words and how you share that with somebody. Always edify the good. So if I know that Mike is get going out and giving great presentations, okay, guess what I should edif edify him doing? Mike, how many presentations did you do this week? 15. Oh, my gosh. That is amazing. On the next conference call, I'm getting on there, and I'm saying, you guys, Mike gave 15 presentations. Now, Mike's never gotten recognition before in his old career. How fired up is he? Big time, Big time right? And what's he want to do next call? Get recognized again, right? Now, what happens to, give me your name again. Chris. Chris. What does Chris want to have happen? Because he heard his buddy Mike on the phone. He wants recognition. Do you see what I'm saying? So positive reinforcement be, trumps everything as opposed to that. Read, that. read that book, and I've got some other examples, and I know I went way on that one, but that was important. The last thing at the top, um, legacy. L, L stands for legacy. What happens eventually is once the money happens, you pretty much begin to get uh, satisfied with recognition. Like, I've been in for uh, networking for 20 years. I have been on... I've won just about every award with every company I've been in. I've always been in the top five money earners, and I've always usually gotten all the awards, okay? When I get a big award on stage, it's hard for me to get emotionally charged and go, thank you, oh my gosh, this is incredible. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm used to it. Legacy means, when legacy happens, it means you take yourself, you really, really become a leader of leaders at legacy. You become a leader of leaders at Legacy because now I'm more fired up when Robert, I will cry when Robert succeeded through his struggle on stage more than hearing my name again on stage, okay? Hopefully, eventually, you all get to that point to where, because I know Mr. Howe does not need another Don, right? I, he always gets fired up when I call him Mr. Howe. Don probably doesn't need another trophy. Don doesn't need another plaque, right? Those are just uh, uh, examples of what he has done. He doesn't need that anymore. 
His greatest reward is not for him to get another paycheck. He's got money, right? His greatest reward is to see Ralph walk across stage with tears in his eyes because he has, you know, he's in training materials and so on. He, he invested in his life, and that will be more satisfying to him. You guys have to learn how to walk yourself through the, that hierarchy of needs to where you are now in the legacy position that they're writing, you're write, they're writing books about you. Does that make sense? Okay, so let me erase this and keep going with my circle because <laughs> there's a purpose for that. All right. <clears throat> C here stands for community. This one stands for culture. Okay, and I know I'm not, I haven't given you any skills yet, so we'll get the skills in a little bit, but we still got to get the mindset right. In any business, I think I started, my, started this talk about this to begin with, most people join a network marketing business or any type of business for the opportunity to make money. The, most people, though, stay and succeed because of the community and the culture. The community and the culture. The community is the people. The culture is how things are done within that community. Um, why do some churches have a lot of people and some churches don't? Isn't it the same gospel supposedly being spoken, right? Why, does some, why do some schools have bigger groups of people that pay lots of money to go to versus other schools, even though it's pretty much a lot of the same curriculum and so on? It's the same thing with business organizations, and more importantly, how it translates to you guys. It's more like your teams. You have to understand that you are going to dictate the culture that is uh, what is that word? Transcended? Is that the right word? Given. I use given instead. That it goes into your people. You're going to set the example, the bar. Now, what, what I thought was, uh, what we're going to show you, I know you guys are already on the path from stuff we studied last time I was here, is community and culture pretty much keeps the person in the game long enough to learn the skills to start walking his way up the, 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 the hierarchy of needs. Okay? Community and culture. So you just got to remember this. Just keep this in the back of your mind. And what happens is what this circle represents is a round swimming pool. You guys have all seen the round swimming pools, four feet high and so on, right? If you've got four or five people in a round swimming pool and they are all doing their own thing with no real guidance, what is happening to the water? It's just making splash, right? That's it. There is no what we would call momentum. Momentum, momentum, momentum is key to this business to really getting it off the, off the ground. What happens is what if we could get all of these people walking, doing basically doing the same thing is the same thing I'm about to share, counterclockwise together at the same time, okay? So if this guy, we talked to him and said, hey, what I want you to do, our goal is to create momentum in the pool. So we're all going to walk chest high in this water. How many of you guys have walked, tried to walk through water before? Through water, not on it, right? On it. Mike sometimes thinks he can walk on water, but that's all right. I know Mike. Uh, I was at his wedding in the dark. Um, anyhow, if, you, if, you, if you've never seen that, if you ever heard that story, it's hilarious. Um, so we're walking in, through water. How hard is it to walk in water when it hasn't moved yet? Very hard, right? You're exhausted trying to get that together, right? What happens is, do you remember one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, four, right? That's this, okay? It's not going fast. It doesn't look like the water's ever going to move. It's hard. It goes to your chest. What happens, though, when we add a couple more people to the same pool? Real important, the same pool doing the same thing. What happens to the inertia of the water? What, it happens, what does it eventually begin to do? It starts going a little faster. Does it typically get a little easier? Yes? 4, 8, 16, 32. What happens when we start adding more and more people to the pool? The guy that gave me this diagram for community and culture uh, was making two hundred and I think thirty thousand dollars a month in his company. It was worldwide and so on. And he said how he got this idea to draw this out was he had uh, just got done uh, got done in the event. He'd had dinner and he was coming out and it was in Jakarta, 
I believe it was, this really nice five-star resort, and he walks out and he heard this uh, huge commotion of like people laughing and yelling and screaming. He couldn't figure it out, and he was drawn to it. Follow me on this story here, okay, and the emotion of it. He was drawn to the commotion of people that were jovial, having fun, and, and enjoying what they were doing. And he looked, and that, that place, that hotel, had this massive, he said it was about 60 feet wide, of a giant round swimming pool that was about four feet deep. And he said there was nearly 100 people in this pool going like this. And he said it looked like a giant washing machine. And he said without thinking, he saw it from the outside in and ran and jumped in it with the momentum. Think about this. This is good. He was here. He saw the action of what was going on. He saw the community and the culture, people having fun, people were working together and going on, and jumped right into the thing and just was flowing in this. Boom, 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 boom. He ruined at least $500 worth of electronics when he did that, he said. Killed his iPhone. He had two iPhones because one was from Canada, one was from where he was in the U.S. Killed two iPhones and so on when he got out. But he said it taught him an amazing lesson because he said that what happens is most people don't want to see what you're doing right here when the momentum of your pool is not going. This is the hardest part of your business right here. Okay? It's the same if you want to write this down and read a good book. I forget the author off the top of my head. It's called The Tipping Point. Who, who wrote that? Thomas, what is it? Malcolm. Malcolm Gladwell. Thank you. Yep, that's it. Tipping Point. You can write this down. Whereas when you start a business like this, your effort level is here, right? And your momentum, your, your critical mass point doesn't happen here until here. Right here is basically the valley of death, <laughs> okay? This is the part where you lose people, where people just don't have it in them. Maybe the dream wasn't big enough. Maybe we didn't tap into what their wants and desires were enough to get to that point. But what, I, what, what you have to understand is that community and culture is just as important, if not the most important, pe per, point, important point.